Hi, it's Chris. Yeah, that's it. This is the very first video of this tutorial. So if you just recently found a telescope of your grandpa or if you bought one, if you're interested in astronomy but you lack the time to dig deep in or if you search for an easy and understandable entrance to this amazing world, feel free to join us on this road to the stars. I created a curriculum covering different aspects of this hobby. It aims to provide everything you need to know and get started. What's up there? Which scope should I buy? Uh, what software is to use? It's a long journey, but worth every second. So if you sit beneath the sky, wandering on the moon or taking an image from galaxies millions of light years away, you will know what I mean. Come on, let's get started. Chapter 1. So this is the first episode of the first chapter. The answer to the question, what is there to see in the night sky? Most people do assume astronomers only look for stars. Well, that's partly true, but doesn't cover the whole point. We will look at different objects and we are going to compare them to get a feeling for the size in the night sky. I will also point out the dimensions of the scope best suited to observe a certain object. I will refer to wide or thin and long or short for now. We will come back to those classifications on later videos. So in order to illustrate the richness of the sky, I created different categories and we will start with the first one, observing or imaging objects of our solar system. The very first object in our category will be the brightest. It's the sun. Yes, the sun is an astronomy object. It can be observed during daytime. Although you must never, never observe the sun without proper protection like professional solar filters. Without filters, blindness can occur in a fraction of a second, so be aware. The second object is the moon. Familiar for shining in the night sky, it has nearly the same size like the sun. I mean, not really, but seen from our perspective. Fun fact, the sun is much, much bigger, but also much further away. So the angular size, as we call it, in the night sky is the same. In lunar eclipses, the moon covers the sun nearly perfectly, giving us the opportunity to observe the faint atmosphere of the sun. But that wasn't the case for all times. Back to the dinosaurs, the moon was quite a bit nearer to the earth and so lunar eclipses covered the corona of the sun as well. In future days the moon will shift outwards and we will never have the total eclipse again, just partial ring eclipses or transits as we call them. Because the size of the moon and the sun in the sky is familiar to us, we will use them as reference points and compare all other objects in the night sky with the moon. Back to the moon and the sun. So with the naked eye you can observe the shape of the objects. Speaking of the moon, you can even make out surface details just using your eyes. Going one step further and using a tiny scope or binoculars, you are able to spot craters, valleys and mountains. The longer your scope, the richer the details. Because of the sheer brightness, no wide scope is needed. Second category, the planets. Let's look at the four best observable planets. And let's start with Venus. Venus is like the twin sister of Earth. It's one step closer to the Sun, it has nearly the same mass and size and was once believed to inhibit rich forms of life. Dinosaurs and humanoid creatures, a garden Eden. Nothing of this is true. Venus is much more like hell. Due to its global cloud coverage and the greenhouse runaway effect, its average temperature on the surface is like 450 degrees Celsius. Acid rain, 92 bars of pressure make life as we know unthinkable of Venus. The first handful of Russian probes were all crumpled during re-entry. The following probes lasted only a few minutes and then died, no place to live on. But because of the dense clouds Venus reflects a lot of light and thus we can observe Venus as a very bright target. Uh, though on the other hand surface details are invisible in visible light spectrum, no, no surface details for us, but cloud structures, layers of different colors. Because Venus is inside Earth's orbit, we can only observe Venus during morning or evening. We will come back to that later. Next candidate, Mars. Mars is our little brother. It's one place out, seen from Earth, and smaller in the sky than Venus. It lacks a thick atmosphere and thus we can observe surface details. But Mars is tiny in the sky. It's not only far away, but it's only like a third of Earth's size. So we need a very long scope to discover things like Olympus Mons, the biggest mountain in the solar system, huge canyons and river beds, darker valleys and even two ice caps on both of the poles can be seen with our amateur equipment. Mars is a fascinating world to observe. 
The next solar body is Jupiter. Jupiter is a gas giant and much further out than all the tiny rocky planets like Earth or Mars. Jupiter is made out of gas and has no real surface, though the end of the top gas layer can be seen as such. Jupiter is giant, 11 times the diameter of Earth, but also far away, roughly 5 times the distance Earth-Sun. So with a long enough scope we can see Jupiter's beautiful and colorful cloud structures. Jupiter has bands of colored gas like stripes or belts, and between those bands Jupiter contains the most massive storms in our solar system. The biggest storm, the red dot, is a hurricane twice the diameter of Earth, lasting for decades or even centuries. Jupiter has dozens of moons. The four biggest moons, Ganymed, Callisto, Io and Europa, can already be seen with a thin but medium-long scope and were discovered by Galileo back in 1610. Next one, Saturn, the pearl of our solar system. Saturn is slightly smaller than Jupiter and even further away from the Sun. It too is a gas giant, meaning that all we can call surface is the top layer of the surrounding clouds. The structure of that layer is not that bright and colorful and shiny as with Jupiter, but nevertheless it's very beautiful. Saturn has even more moons than Jupiter and the biggest, Titan, can be seen from our backyard. But of course Saturn is mainly known and loved for its ring system. Some millennia ago a big moon crushed or something like that and formed a giant ring system. Seeing this rings through your scope will change your view of the sky forever. When I first spotted that pearl of the sky, I was trapped. So again, the planets are way far out and, compared with other deep space stuff, they are very tiny. How tiny? Well, I did a comparison. We have a good feeling for the size of the moon in the sky. So I took Stellarium, a cool free software you should download right now, and I did a comparison on scale. This is the moon. And these are the four planets on scale we talked about, Jupiter and Saturn, Mars and Venus. Jupiter and Saturn are bigger compared to Venus and Mars, but nevertheless, look how tiny they appear from our point of view compared to the Moon. Let's zoom from the Moon, say, to Mars. So to sum up, to observe those tiny planets you need a very long scope, but because they are very bright compared to other stuff, you just need a very thin scope. No giant rocket launcher is needed for a short glimpse at the planets. There are planets left, Uranus and Neptune, both at the outer boundary of our system. They are called ice giants. They, too, are made of gas, but far, far away from Sun, and tinier than Saturn, thus bigger than any rocky planet like Earth or Venus. Given all that, with our modest equipment, they appear like that. Tiny dots of pale blue. They look like stars on amateur images. No surface details can be revealed with our equipment. They are difficult to find and difficult to capture. If you want to try it, then you need a very long scope, as they are very tiny, and a very wide scope, as they are very pale too. This scope setting also accounts for all the other tiny and pale objects in our solar system. Comets, asteroids, dwarf planets, Leave them for later sessions. Or try your skills. One left? No, not Pluto. That's no planet no more. I'm talking of Mercury. The tiny rock planet is the innermost planet and therefore can only be seen close to the Sun. So only with a good view to the horizon and counting the minutes just before sunrise or half a Mercury year later, just after sunset it can be spotted. It's tricky. Another way? Capture its transit before the Sun as I did. This is Mercury. Next transit is roughly 13 years ahead. Good luck! So to sum up, sun and moon, bright and big. Scope can be whatever you wish. Mind the sun filter. The big four planets, bright and tiny. The scope should be long but can be thin. The ice giants and other stuff like asteroids and stuff, difficult. Tiny and dim, the scope must be wide and long. And Mercury? Uh, spared for later sessions. So there you have it, the solar system bodies, but that's just the beginning. The next video will cover the so-called deep sky objects like nebulas, galaxies and so on. We have a long way to go, so stay tuned. Clear skies, until next time, here on Catching Photons.